Welcome to the brand new 6 p.m. newscast here in Korea. I'm Daniel Che here to provide you with the latest. It's been almost a year since the tragic Tewoho ferry accident. Now, President Park Geun-hye says the government is looking into the technical feasibility of salvaging the ship. And Japan's sovereign territory, illegally occupied by Korea. That's how newly revised Japanese middle school history textbooks are describing Korea's Tokyo Island. The changes announced Monday are putting even more strain on tension relations between the two countries. Koreans are spending more and more time and money on two wheels. The country's bicycle market was worth some 644 million U.S. dollars in 2014, and it's expected to increase as the nation's bike riding population continues to grow and grow. Tensions between Korea and Japan are bubbling over again today as Tokyo approved new history textbooks containing territorial claims over Korea's Tokyo Island. The approval is only the first in a string of April events that could further strain relations between the two neighbors. Our Hwang Sung-hee starts us off. Korea slammed Japan on Monday over a set of new school textbooks containing stronger claims over Korea's Tokyo Island. Japan once again took a provocative step by approving middle school textbooks that distort unequivocal historical facts. The changes are part of Japan's annual textbook reviews. The number of textbooks stating Tokyo as being illegally occupied by Korea is now 13, more than triple the number four years ago. That means the majority of middle school students in Japan will be learning Tokyo's unjustified claims from next spring. Fifth and sixth graders are already using textbooks with similar claims. To protest the latest revision, Seoul's foreign ministry summoned Japanese ambassador to Korea, Koro Betsho, and called for Tokyo's sincerity in time for the 50th anniversary of normalizing diplomatic ties. We urge Japan to make efforts to improve the bilateral ties with sincerity based on spirits of apologies made by its previous administrations at a landmark year. The ministry is also promoting Tokyo online in 11 languages, including Italian, Portuguese and Hindi. Tokyo's unjustified claims over Tokyo, known as Takeshima in Japanese, have been one of the thorniest issues between the two neighbors. Japan is set to unveil its 2015 diplomatic paper on Tuesday, which will reportedly repeat its claims over Tokyo. And if so, that will only further dampen bilateral relations, which are already at their historic low in recent years. Hwang Tang-hee, Arirang News. With North Korea reported to have set a no-sail, no-fly zone in the East Sea, there's growing concern the regime could stage a military provocation soon. Citing a South Korean government official, local media say ships and aircraft in the north have been notified not to fly or sail in the East Sea. The order has been in effect since last Wednesday. Watchers are reading this as a sign that the regime is trying to protect its own vessels and planes as it plans to test fire a mid-range Nodong-class ballistic missile in the near future. They believe Pyongyang could conduct a missile test around the time of U.S. Defense Chief Ashton Carter's visit to South Korea this week or the birthday of its founding father, Kim Il-sung, next week. Nearly a year has passed since the Sewerho ferry capsized and sank in the waters off Korea's southwestern coast, killing more than 300 passengers on board. The issue of salvaging the sunken ferry has become a hot potato ahead of the one-year anniversary, so President Park Geun-hye, for the first time, talked about actively pursuing the recovery with support from the bereaved families and the public. Our Choi Yoo-sun reports. With nine bodies still unaccounted for, the families of the Sewolho ferry victims are demanding an immediate recovery of the ship. They're also asking the government to hold off on compensations until an independent probe into the accident is completed. The latest survey by the Korea Research Center showed 77 percent of Korean people support salvaging the vessel. President Park Geun-hye talked about an ongoing civilian-led review of the recovery process at Monday's secretary's meeting. 
실종자 가족과 전문가들의 의견과 여론을 수렴해서 선체 인양을 적극적으로 검토할 것입니다. While this has been Seoul's position on the sunken ferry, watchers say that President Buck's reference to an active consideration is a sign that the administration may be leaning more towards pulling the vessel out of the sea. With the one-year anniversary of the April 16th disaster looming, the leaders of both the country's main rival parties are pressing the government to make a decision on the ferry's recovery. Some within the ruling Senuri party, however, argue the salvaging process is too costly and could lead to more casualties. It's estimated that the recovery would cost up to 184 million U.S. dollars. A report from the technical review is expected to be publicized before April 16th. As for how to go about gathering public opinion following that report, the ruling party floor leader has openly rejected Ocean's Minister Yuki Jun's proposal to conduct a poll. Choi Yusan, Arirang News. Turkmenistan's President Gurbanguly Beherde Muhammadov will be making a state visit to Korea next week. Korea's presidential office says that after arriving on Saturday, the Turkmen leader will attend Sunday's opening of the 7th World Water Forum in Tegu and meet President Park for summit talks on April 13th. The two leaders are scheduled to discuss ways to bolster bilateral cooperation, especially in infrastructure and plant construction and science and technology, as well as efforts to expand exchanges between Koreans and Turkmen. It will be their second meeting following President Bak's trip to the Central Asian country last year. Turkmenistan's large-scale energy and infrastructure projects hold great potential for Korean firms seeking to win overseas orders. One out of four major companies in Korea was unable to pay off its interest debt in the year 2014. That's a slight rise from the year before when the government's interest rate cuts should have made it easier for firms to cover their costs. Our Kwon Zawa tells us why these companies are still struggling. The nation's biggest companies are having a hard time paying back their interest debts out of their earnings. Conglomerate tracking market researcher Tebal.com looked at around 160 companies that made annual sales of at least 1 trillion won or more than 910 million U.S. dollars last year. They found that 23.6 percent of these companies recorded an interest coverage ratio of below 1. A ratio above 1 means the company makes more than it has to pay in interest. Below 1 means its ability to cover its debts has decreased. It may seem ironic that the number of firms in the below one category increased by nearly two percentage points from 2013, despite the Bank of Korea's key interest rate cuts last year, leading to cheaper borrowing costs. The operating profits of large firms are shrinking at a bigger rate than the interest rate cut has shrunk interest payment costs. Industries hit by falling global oil prices have struggled the most to pay off their interest debts. Since Korea is highly dependent on exports, and especially on exports to China, the shipment, steel and petrochemical industries slumping earnings are expected to continue as China's economy is slowing. That's why with no immediate signs of improving external factors, analysts forecast that this year will continue to be challenging. Although the central bank's rate cuts were not enough to help large companies repay their interest debts, experts say that in order to enhance investment conditions, another cut may be inevitable. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. Korea's biggest tech brands, LG Electronics and Samsung Electronics, maintained their vice-like grip on the global TV monitor market last year. Market research company IDC says the firm had a combined global sales volume of more than 99 percent of the market. LG had 53 percent and Samsung 46.2 percent on the worldwide market in TV monitors, which doubled as TVs and computer screens. The devices are popular with those living alone, and more households are buying TV monitors as their second televisions. IDC also projects the market will further expand to 6.5 percent of overall screen purchases this year, up 0.7 percentage points from last year. And a significant milestone for Korea, online sales exceeded sales of brick-and-mortar stores for the first time ever last year. Statistics Korea and the Korea Customs Service says online transactions, including purchases from non-Korea-based websites, totaled 
$43.2 billion U.S. billion in 2014. And that's $200 million more than sales at offline retailers such as supermarkets and department stores. And in a sign of where things may be headed, year-on-year -year growth from online operations was more than five-fold that of chain megastores. Purchases on mobile platforms recorded the largest jump, up over 125 percent compared to the previous year. With the weather warming up nicely, people are heading outdoors for fun and fitness, and cycling tops the list of activities for many Koreans. The bike riding population has surged in recent years, and that's fueling a thriving local market. But it's the unquenchable taste for high-end equipment and accessories that's likely to keep the industry growing for years to come. Our Shin Zemin has this report. More than one in five Koreans, that's about 12 million men, women and children, ride bicycles regularly, making it one of the most popular outdoor leisure activities in the country. The domestic bicycle market was worth a cool 644 million U.S. dollars as of last year, and it's a number that's expected to keep rising. Korea's largest bicycle manufacturer and retailer, Samcheon Lee, says it recorded sales of over $111 million last year, up 10 percent from the previous year. Its close rival, Alton Sports, posted $62 million, an 11 percent surge from 2013. Local manufacturers aren't the only ones fueling the expansion. Koreans are buying imported bicycles by the boatload. Last year alone, Korea imported bikes worth $210 million, and that translates into annual average growth of nearly 9 percent since 2012. Cycling is a simple pleasure that anyone can enjoy, but there are certain types of bicycles dominating the local market, and they are high-tech, super-premium models. The demand for these bicycles, which can cost more than a second-hand car, is stronger now than ever. I spent over $4,000 on the bike alone and I own a couple of spandex bike suits. Spending a lot of money on all the related products just makes me want to ride my bicycle even more. It's like you start out driving a compact car, then you see a sports car speeding by you. Automatically you'll want to get yourself a better car. It's the same with the bike. You start spending more because you know it'll get you better speed, stability and the design. And once you feel that, there's no turning back. Experts say the growing interest in expensive bicycles and accessories was foreseen, given Koreans' spending habits and shifting household dynamics. The size of an average Korean household continues to shrink. There used to be mostly three or four member households, but now we are seeing a rise in two and even single person households. These people choose to spend their free time on activities that satisfy them, even if their hobby costs them tens of thousands of dollars. The future for the local bicycle industry looks even more promising as more and more Koreans take up bike riding to keep themselves fit and in tip-top shape. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. With cigarette prices nearly doubling this year, many smokers have turned to electronic cigarettes to quit smoking. But experts are questioning the safety and effectiveness of the alternative to lighting up. Our Connie Kim has the details. Smokers who think electronic cigarettes are a healthy way to quit smoking may want to think again. In a statement released Monday by Korea's National Evidence-Based Healthcare Collaborating Agency, experts and doctors agreed that e-cigarettes could cause significant harm and may not help smokers butt out. The agency says that cancer-causing substances are still present in e-cigarettes, although at lower levels. In addition, harmful constituents not permitted in regular cigarettes could be included in e-cigarettes. And it's still difficult to tell how much nicotine e-cigarette smokers inhale. Finally, the agency determined that it's not appropriate to promote e-cigarettes as an answer for people who want to quit smoking. Under the Korean law, electronic cigarettes are considered cigarettes. Until comprehensive research proves that e-cigarettes are harm-free and contribute to quitting smoking. Nicotine patches or chews that are scientifically proven to be safe should be promoted. However, e-cigarette businesses say their products are effective quitting devices. We've seen many smokers quit smoking after switching to electronic cigarettes. 
Also, if we compare the number of harmful substances in cigarettes and electronic cigarettes, the latter is much less. According to Euromonitor International, the global market size for e-cigarettes was 7 billion U.S. dollars last year. The Korean market grew to 27.7 million dollars in 2014. Experts say more study is required to conclude whether electronic cigarettes are truly harmful and whether they're effective in quitting smoking. But the World Health Organization is urging countries to implement tougher controls on any products, including e-cigarettes, that may promote smoking. Connie Kim, Arirang News. And we've come to the end of this newscast, but I'll be back with Hwang Ji at 10 p.m. Korea time to give you more updates. For now, thank you for watching.